To get the most out of this exam question video, I suggest you pause the video after each question, give yourself a chance to think about the question, and then resume the video to listen to what the answer should be. So the first question says, in an experiment, different metals were placed in a test tube of hydrochloric acid, and the temperature change was measured with the thermometer. Here are the results. Question A, use the results to put the metals in order of reactivity from most reactive to least reactive. And question B, explain the result for copper. So question A, the highest temperature change indicates it's the most reactive metal. So if we put them in order of highest to lowest temperature change, that gives us magnesium, aluminium, iron and copper. Now the result for copper, there is no temperature increase there because there was no reaction. Or you could say copper does not react with acids. Remember, any metals below hydrogen in the reactivity series won't react with acid. The next questions are all about the variables. So have a think about that first. So the independent variable is the one that you change. So in this case, it's the type of metal. We've got magnesium, copper, iron, and so on. The dependent variable is the one that you measure and write down in your results table. So that is the temperature increase. And the control variables are the variables you need to keep the same. So in this one, make sure you don't say the amount of something. We want to use words like volume and mass. So if we're talking about liquids, we say volume. If we're talking about a solid, we say we're going to measure out the mass of it. So for this question, that would be the volume of acid, also the concentration of the acid, and the mass of the metal. You would also be allowed the same starting temperature of the acid at the start of the experiment. Question two. This question is all about using the reactivity series to predict what would happen in displacement reactions. So make sure you can remember the reactivity series first of all. If you need a reminder, I'll put a link up now to a previous video. Look at the results table below. A tick means there was a reaction and a cross means there was no reaction. Fill in each empty box with either a tick or a cross. So if we work our way across the first line, Iron and copper sulfate. Iron is higher up the reactivity series than copper, which means it's more reactive than copper, so it can take the sulfate from copper. In other words, it can displace copper. So that would be a tick. The next box, iron and zinc sulfate. Iron is less reactive than zinc, so that would be a cross because iron cannot displace zinc. Then magnesium and iron sulfate. Magnesium is more reactive than iron, so it can displace iron and take the sulfate from it. Magnesium is also more reactive than copper, so you'd get a reaction between magnesium and copper sulfate. Copper and iron sulfate, well, copper is less reactive than iron, so it cannot displace iron, so there would be no reaction. And copper is also less reactive than zinc, so it won't displace zinc. And then the bottom row, zinc is less reactive than magnesium, so there'd be no reaction there, as zinc can't displace magnesium. And zinc is more reactive than copper, so zinc can displace copper, and therefore there would be a reaction. Question B, magnesium reacted with zinc sulfate, write the word equation for this reaction. So the two reactants go on the left, magnesium and zinc sulfate. And we can see here that magnesium is more reactive than zinc, so it pinches the sulfate, or you could say it displaces the sulfate, so that makes magnesium sulfate and zinc on the right. If you're studying for the higher tier paper, you could be asked to write a balanced symbol equation for this reaction. So that would be Mg for magnesium, ZnSO4 for zinc sulfate, MgSO4 for magnesium sulfate, and Zn for zinc. And this equation is already balanced. Now, if you're not sure why zinc sulfate is ZnSO4 or magnesium sulfate is MgSO4, I'll put a link up here now to a previous video explaining how we write ionic formulas. Question three. This question is about extracting metals from their ores. 
First of all, what is an ore? Well, an ore is a rock that contains enough of a metal to make it worth extracting. Question B. Hematite is the ore that iron is extracted from. It is made of iron oxide. This can be heated with carbon in a blast furnace to extract the iron. Finish balancing the following equation and state which substance is oxidized and which substance is reduced. So when it comes to balancing the equation, we can see we've got three carbon atoms on the right, so we're going to need three on the left. Remember, we can't change those small numbers. All we can do is put large numbers in front of formulas. Then we can see that on the left, we've got four iron atoms. So we're going to need four on the right. Now, if you've forgotten how to balance equations, I'll put a link up to a video now explaining how we balance equations. Now, in terms of what's oxidized and reduced, we need to remember oxidation is when something gains oxygen. So carbon is oxidized and reduction is when something loses oxygen. So iron is reduced as it loses the oxygen. If you're finding this exam question walkthrough useful, please give the video a like. So question C, when the iron comes out of the blast furnace, it is mixed with carbon to turn it into cast iron. Explain why cast iron is stronger than pure iron by talking about the atoms. You may draw diagrams if you wish. But even though it says this, you still need an explanation to go along with any diagrams if you do draw diagrams. And notice how we're mixing up the topics a bit. Sometimes the examiners do this. This is going back to work on alloys from topic three about structure and bonding. So first of all, the pure iron is an element. That means it's got all the same sized atoms so they can slide past each other so it is soft. The cast iron is what we call an alloy. It's a metal atom mixed with other types of atom. So because it's got different sized atoms, this distorts the layers so the atoms cannot slide past each other. And this means it is much stronger. So if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching.